So first, the setup. I am going to let U1, and, and in this case, I'm actually just going to end it here at UP opposed to N. I'm going to set U1 down to UP be an orthogonal basis for W. I'm thinking of these being vectors in a larger RN, and then the W might not be all of RN, some smaller space with dimension P, and I have this orthogonal basis board. And then I'm going to assume that this, this W that we have here, that's a subspace, is going to be, indeed, a subspace of a larger RN. So it might be only P-dimensional, but it's living inside of Rn. Then, my theorem claims that if I let y be a, a generic vector in all of Rn, not necessarily in w, just somewhere in Rn, then we can do the following thing, is that we can write our y as the sum of two different things, and I'm going to use the notation that we've seen before. The first is going to be the y vector with a hat, and the second is going to be a z vector. And the condition here is that the y vector with the hat is an element of w. And we're going to think of this as an orthogonal projection down into w. And that the z vector is an element of w perp. That is, every vector can be written as the sum of two other vectors, one in the subspace and one in w perp. That is what the decomposition theorem is going to say. The orthogonal decomposition decomposes the vector as to something in W and something in its orthogonal complement. So this is the statement of my theorem. Now before I prove this, I want to sketch a specific example so that I can have a little bit of intuition as to what's going on here. So let me suppose that I've got the coordinate axes, my x, my y, and my z axes, and that I have some particular vector here, and in our terminology we're calling this the vector y. Then what I'm going to think about as my subspace u is that this is going to be the xy plane and it's got two different vectors. There's going to be my u1 and there's going to be my u2. So in this case my w is going to be the xy plane. Where I've got a u1 and I have a u2. Now, what I can do with this vector is I can imagine doing the orthogonal projection down here onto the xy plane, and that what I'm going to have is some vector, if I orthogonally project it, lives in the plane. The idea is, imagine this is your xy plane, and I have some vector here. Its orthogonal projection is some other vector lying in this plane. So that's what I'm referring to. This vector that I have sketched out here, this is going to be my vector, y vector with a hat, the orthogonal projection. And then the vector which is going to be sitting straight up here, that's this vector right there that, that goes from the y hat up to the y, that is going to be my vector z, and indeed in this picture my y is going to be my y hat plus my z, and it has the key defining property of having an orthogonal 90 degree angle in this particular triangle. So when I have my plane and I take a generic vector, I can always write it as a vector in the plane and then a vector sitting straight up where all of the vectors sitting straight up are the orthogonal complement to the vectors lying inside of the plane. So that's sort of the general picture that I'm going to work with. All right. So now let us go and try to prove this particular claim. The way this is going to work is that I am going to construct for you the y hat and the vector z. So I am going to tell you what it is, and the formula is going to look messy, but it's actually a formula that we've seen before in a slightly different guise. So I'm going to define this y vector hat as the following thing. I'm going to say that it is y dotted with the first basis vector u1 divided out by u1 dotted with u1 and in the u1 direction. And I'm going to have some more terms here. Uh, they're going to go along obeying that same pattern all the way up to the y vector dotted with the 
uh, pth basis vector all divided by up dotted with up and in the up direction. Now I want you to note here that these messy formulas that stick out the bottom, that, that these are going to be elements of the real numbers, so they are a scalar for the basis vectors that we have here all the way down to there. Now, we've seen these kind of coefficients before. If we look at, say, the first one, that we previously geometrically interpreted that as the orthogonal projection of your vector y onto the first basis vector, onto the u1. And the final one here is going to be the orthogonal projection of y onto the pth basis vector, the up. Well, if I have this and I want my z to be y equals y hat plus z, I can rearrange and say that z is therefore going to be y minus that. So I am going to further assert, assert, <laughs> assert, I'm going to further assert that z is going to be equal to y minus that big gnarly expression, and I'm not going to copy it down again, I'll just write it there as y hat. Now, what is my theorem saying? I, I've defined these two vectors, but do they satisfy the conditions of the theorem? But the theorem tells me that in particular the y hat is in w and the z is in w perp. It's clear by our definition that they add together in the right way because we just define z to be the difference. So clearly they add up to y, but, but do they obey those two properties? That's the key question. Now one of those two is I'm going to claim straightforward. Namely, the y hat is going to be clearly inside of w. Why? Well, each of these basis vectors, the u1 down to the up, are in w. That was by definition, it was a basis for w. So this is a linear combination of the basis vectors in w that is clearly in w. But the question is then, this is what I'm, I'm left to, is, is it the case that my z is an element use the element symbol, of w perp. That is our question. Well, how would we know that? It would have to be that the z vector is going to be dotted with any vector in w equal to zero. Or, as we saw previously, an equivalent property is that z dotted with ui is equal to zero. If that's true for every single i, then we're going to have the property that this z is in w perp, because this was an equivalent property to being in w perp. So that's what we have to do. We have to verify that this is the case. Okay, so we know what z is. There it is. Let's take the dot product with u. So z dotted with u, and I'm choosing the generic ui here, but we could use u1 or up, any of them, but I need to do them all, so I'm going to do ui generically. Okay, and this is going to be, by definition, y minus y hat. So if I'm dotting with ui, first I get y dotted with ui. And then I want to subtract off the y hat dotted with ui. But y hat was this big gnarly expression up here. And so I'm going to have to, unfortunately, crack it open here. I'm going to copy and paste the first term because I'm not doing anything differently. So y dotted with the ui, but now if I'm going to take the dot product with ui up here, there's going to be a whole mass of terms. But I want to be a little bit clever about this mass of terms. Notice that they're coefficients times the basis vectors ui, but it's an orthogonal basis. So if I take the dotted ui and I dot it with this large expression, well, if i is not 1, then the dot product with u1 is 0 because it's orthogonal. Likewise for up, likewise for every one of these, the only one here that survives is the ith term. That's the only one that survives a dot product with ui. So in other words, I'm going to only write down here the coefficient of the ith term is y dotted with ui divided by ui dotted with ui. So that's my coefficient. And then it's all multiplied by ui, that's what we always multiply them by, and then finally dotted with another copy of ui. Okay, so I'm trying to show my z is in w perp, so I'm taking the dot product with all of these uis, and let's see what we get. Well, 
ui.ui is on the bottom, ui.ui is on the top. And then if I look at what I'm left with, that's just this portion right here, that's the exact same thing that we have over there. This is the same term and I'm subtracting. So what I am therefore going to get is that this is equal to zero. And then I'm going to claim that I have shown what I wanted to show. Namely, if I zoom out here, the theorem was that I could take my y and I could write it as the sum of two things, one in w and one in w per. And then what we did when our proof was we defined this, this w hat here. It was clearly in w. We defined our z and then we had to do a little bit of work to show that z was in w part because the dot product of z with any of the orthogonal basis vectors was equal to zero. I want to note one final thing that I will leave as an exercise, and it is this. We've got a decomposition. If I have a vector, there's, there's at least this one way to decompose it is w and w perp and the sum of those two vectors. But what I'm going to additionally assert here is that this is a unique decomposition. There is only one such way to do it, the one way that we wrote down.